We've talked a lot about the awesome power that black holes possess. Their relativistic jets are one of the few emissions coming from any one object that can be measured in light years, moving at nearly 10% the speed of light. When a supermassive black hole feeds, it can generate enough power to destroy the galaxy that depends on its immense gravitational force. The Fermi bubbles that stretch 50,000 light years perpendicular to our galaxy's ecliptic plane are the remnants of an immense explosion of energy which came from Sagittarius A star, our supermassive black hole. It's thought that this explosion would have happened about 2 million years ago, when human beings were still evolving. But seemingly unrelated to this, astronomers have noticed that within 1.6 light years of the galactic center, there seem to be far fewer red giants than there should be, leading them to wonder why. Now, a new theory seeks to explain why there are so few red stars near the galactic center, and it has everything to do with Sagittarius A star. But before we dive into the new info, be sure to hit that like button, comment when you'd like to see Sagittarius A star erupt again, assuming it isn't a danger to us, smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss a video. I'm Eric Malachite, author of Minds Horizon, and this is Science Get. As stated earlier, there are fewer red giants near the galactic center than there should be. And this lack of red stars seems to be most evident 1.6 light years from Sagittarius A. This anomaly was first observed by astronomer Chris Kelgren when they noticed a distinct lack of carbon monoxide, something commonly found in the outer layers of a red giant, coming from the galactic center in 1990. Shortly after this observation, it was found that there are fewer than 1,000 red giants than there should be in this region of the Milky Way. When stars get old, like me, they stop fusing hydrogen in their cores. They turn red and their radii expand far beyond what they used to be, engulfing any exoplanet that happens to be orbiting too close. But you knew that. This is the last stage of a star's life before they finally die, shedding their outer layers and becoming a planetary nebula, or going supernova. But why are there so few red giants near the galactic center? Well, astrophysicists may finally have the answer. It's thought that the explosion that formed the Fermi bubbles two million years ago had little effect on the Earth. After all, we're still here, right? This is good because, as we've mentioned many times before, these relativistic jets can have devastating effects. In a new theory proposed by astrophysicist Michael Zajacek and his colleagues at the Polish Academy of Sciences in Warsaw suggests that the eruptions coming from Sagittarius A star, perhaps even the one that formed the Fermi bubbles, could have stripped the outer layers of the red giants in this region 1.6 light years from the galactic center, turning them blue in the process. Zajacek and his colleagues believe that relativistic jets like the ones that form the Fermi bubbles are more likely to act on red giants because of their immense size and because their upper layers tend to be a lot less stable than younger stars. We usually hear that red giants form because a star runs out of fuel. At least, I know I've heard that before on plenty of science documentaries. But this really isn't the case. The stars still have hydrogen. But what really causes them to stop being able to fuse is an overabundance of helium, which develops in the core of the star. This forces the star to burn hydrogen in the outer layers instead, cooling it and turning it red. The missing red giants would have had to orbit through the path of these relativistic jets hundreds of times before finally turning blue, and those closest within 0.13 light years would have been the most vulnerable to these effects. Though when we say hundreds of times, you might think that this would have taken hundreds if not thousands of years. But remember that the orbits of stars closer to the galactic center aren't what they are here in the middle of the galaxy or the outer edge. Now, as you can see by this time lapse taken over a period of about 20 years, things are a lot more chaotic. In fact, the fastest orbiting star in the galactic center actually moves at 8% the speed of light, which would probably make a great topic for a video. It's also worth it to note that the explosion that formed the Fermi bubbles is thought to have lasted for at least 300,000 years. The explosion is also estimated to have been powerful enough to reach a distance of 200,000 light years, striking the Magellanic Stream, a long trail of gas we've observed coming from the large and small Magellanic clouds. 
that orbit our galaxy. So even though 300,000 years of activity for a relativistic jet isn't really all that long in cosmic terms, considering some of the other quasars we've observed, it is plenty of time for a bunch of red supergiants in the galaxy's core to orbit hundreds, if not thousands of times far above the estimated number of orbits they would have had to have completed to have their outer layers stripped. Okay, this sounds pretty solid, but what does the rest of the scientific community think? Is there any other way we could explain the distinct lack of red giants in our galaxy? Let's find out. Farhad Youssef Zadeh, an astronomer at Northwestern University in Evanston, Illinois, thinks that this theory is definitely plausible that relativistic jets could have stripped the outer layers of the missing red giants. Another astronomer, however, Tuan Do from UCLA, thinks that this alone can't explain the lack of red giants, and that it's more likely that a combination of mechanisms would likely explain this anomaly. But what other mechanisms are they talking about? Well, one theory is that Sagittarius A star once had an accretion disk, like more active supermassive black holes do in other galaxies, as seen in the first photo of a black hole ever taken by the Event Horizon Telescope. The idea is that this disk would have extended as far out as 0.5 parsecs, 1.63 light years, and these red giants would have passed through it, having their outer layers stripped off by the extreme forces within the accretion disk. In fact, astrophysicists at Georgia Tech ran simulations based off of the type of red giants that are thought to be missing from the galactic center. The computer simulation puts these stars through an amped up wind tunnel that simulates the forces they would be subjected to when passing through an accretion disk, varying orbital velocities and the disk's densities so that they could find the right conditions that would lead to these stars turning blue. Tamara Bogdanovic, the assistant professor who co-led the study, said that in relation to her team's work, red giants could have lost a significant portion of their mass only if the disk was very massive and dense, so dense that gravity would have already fragmented the disk on its own, helping to form massive clumps that became the building blocks for a new generation of stars. But just as with the new theory involving the relativistic jets, it would have taken as many as 12 passes through this hypothetical... I mean, the computer's not wrong, I guess. ...accretion disk, and could have taken as long as 4 to 8 million years. Thomas Forrest Kiefer, the first author of the paper, went on to say, The only way for this scenario to take place within that relatively short time frame was if, back then, had a much larger mass than all of the young stars that eventually formed from it, at least 100 to 1,000 times more mass. But it's worthwhile to note that these types of accretion disks typically form when a black hole feeds, which is the same type of event that leads to a relativistic jet, like the one that formed the Fermi bubbles. So it's very likely that both of these theories are correct to a certain degree. Tamara Bogdanovic suggests that we need to know more about what led to our galaxy's most recent star formation period, and whether that region of the galaxy would have had enough gas to account for an accretion disk. We would also need to see a significant number of underluminous red giants with abnormally fast rotational speed, something which would be very difficult to see with our current telescopes, before we can say for certain that such an accretion disk would have played a role in reducing the number of red giants we see around Sagittarius A star. But personally, I think it's probably a combination of these mechanisms. And it makes a lot of sense, seeing as how we've observed much more powerful black holes generating relativistic jets that rapidly decrease the life of the galaxy. In any case, we'll have to see how these theories develop, and you can bet that we'll be here to talk about it when they do. If you enjoyed this content, be sure to drop a like and comment what you think of these theories. Be sure to smash that subscribe button and ring that bell to never miss an episode of Science Get, and check out my Patreon, link in description if you'd like to support the channel. There you'll get early access to SciGet videos, short science fiction, horror, and dark fantasy stories, serialized novels, your name featured at the end of every video, and much more. My goal is to get SciGet up to four videos a week, and I know I can do that with your help. I'm Eric Malachite, and I'll see you next time.